Hey, we've got Ellen in the house. Or did I pronounce that properly? Elena. Yeah. Oh, Elena. Hi, oh, excuse me. Hi, 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 hi. Now I meet you in person, so to speak. Well, thanks. Thanks for doing this, first of all. It, it's tons oh. of fun. And I listen because it, it makes me laugh. And I love to hear all the women uh, talk and share their stuff. And uh, anyway, so. What do you got for me? And thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I guess I want a bit of a advice not opinion on um <laughs> well the strategy or how to act or what to do at the speed dating events because I've, I've gone to a few of those and um i try to ask people like meaningful questions which it yeah. totally takes them aback because most of the guys want to ask where are you from are you married do you have kids kind of shit yeah 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 <laughs> Uh, like, what, what does it matter where I live if we're not hitting it off? You know, you're not going to be driving to see me. <laughs> what do you care? Ask something important, right? <laughs> well, let me interrupt for a second, Lena. That's actually a very important question to, because if, if there's a substantial distance, that could be problematic. So actually knowing that, keep in mind, you're meeting a total stranger. You know nothing about them. Well, it's a um, local event, so we're all in the driving distance. Okay, no, well, that's, that's not, not necessarily. Like, People yeah. will drive 30 or 40 miles sometimes mm -hmm. to a speeding event. So just, I, I don't, my point is that particular question, I think is a valid question amongst other valid questions, okay? So yeah, just, it, I wouldn't it, discount that question. I okay, yeah, I, I can see it's valid when you're actually like interested in someone and then going, you know, considering a possibility of actually meeting them. But yeah, sure. before before you even get there. Well, anyway, also, I, talking about the city though, you know, if like if, but well, I'm, I'm, and by the way, I know there's more to your question. So I want to, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to unpack that. Okay. But yeah. also there's certain characteristics of a city that's different from one city. So it, like I live in Redondo beach, for example, it has unique characteristics versus Beverly Hills. And, you know, I mean, I'm just giving it. So there's unique characteristics that can create well, some fodder for conversation. That's all I'm saying. Where I live, you have to go 20 miles to get anywhere. So, but anyway, yeah. So, um, I don't know if I'm um, coming on too strong with that or scaring people off or whatever, but it's like whenever I got to the point where there was a match, guy gets my number, he starts texting and I say, well, can I have, can we have a conversation on the phone? I'm like, you know, we can only text so much. And then a guy would just disappear or yeah. maybe he was, okay, in the last scenario, there's, there is more to that. Um, he, he said, I'll call you after work. And I say, when is after work? I may be going out for a bit. And maybe he assumed I was going out with somebody else, but he just disappeared. He said, I go, I could call you six 30, but, but go ahead. Don't let me stop you. Or don't let me hold you back. Something like that. Okay. He said. Okay. <laughs> so, I, to me, that was just rude and, and impolite to like not reply. And I said, I couldn't like, can we talk later? I won't be home at six 30. Could we talk later this evening? And he just fell silent. And yeah. to me, that was just rude and infantile behavior on his part for thinking that, oh, maybe I'm going out with another guy and, oh, I shouldn't talk to her after that. <laughs> well, OK, so let's unpack a couple of these things. First off, the man who is texting and not jumping on a telephone call. I think there's this gigantic confusion that just because there might like there might have been a tiny little bit of interest. OK. You you physically saw each other at this speed dating event, so you broke the 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 sniff test of 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 maybe attraction, physical attraction to some degree. Yeah, it's not like but we met I, online and never spoke. We already spoke in person, so I don't. Yeah, see exactly. Why, uh, so, so, so there's yes, so there's that. However, chances are most of the time it's very rare that you meet someone at a speed dating event and you go oh my god wow like you're not fe you weren't feeling an oh my god wow with him and he wasn't feeling an oh my god wow with you okay of course not we only spoke right. for 5 minutes you can unlikely well, I mean, get a wow in 5 minutes of knowing so well believe it or not you know 
when a man is gigantically physically attracted to a woman, he feels a gigantic wow. When a woman is gigantically physically attracted to a man, she feels a wow, okay? It's not about the energy in that moment. I'm just talking about the visual, okay? So if a person isn't feeling a gigantic wow, what happens then is you're kind of in this, I'm talking about an emotional state, okay? In that space, they're feeling, well, I'm kind of interested, but I don't know. Okay, I'm kind of interested, I don't know. Okay, that's Maybe number one. For number man, because I don't, I don't think I feel a gigantic wow for anyone at this point. No. I got to see more of the person before I go all wow on him because he's physically okay. attractive. Can I, can I <laughs> pause you for a second? I want you to take a deep breath. No, please take a deep breath. I want you to hear what I'm saying. If he's not feeling a gigantic wow, you are simply a maybe in that moment, okay? Emotionally speaking. Forget the expectation of feeling a wow. When a man feels a gigantic wow, he puts in maximum effort, okay? You right now are a stranger. And the reason why it's texting is that's safer. It feels safer to communicate via text these days because we're dealing with a population of emotionally wounded human beings, particularly if they've had multiple relationships that didn't work out. I'm going to tell you something. Just even experiencing that man that communicated and disappeared has an emotional effect on us. It can create an emotional effect of I'm not worthy. I'm not suggesting that's what you felt, but I'm going to tell you. That's what it can feel like for a significant percentage of human beings, okay? So that person that was texting and doesn't progress it forward, it's because he feels doubt, uncertainty, unsafe, okay? Now, you're probably going, then what's the point of making effort? See, we feel like we'll make more effort when we feel a wow. So there's no wow coming up in the communication between the two of you. And here's the thing. Women have been indoctrinated to believe that men are the leaders of the process. So you get frustrated because he's not progressing the process any forward. I'm just telling you why he's not progressing the process forward. Does that make sense? Okay. 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 So now the second person, the, was it about competition? Um, I know as a man, I don't like. I don't like competition. I, I, I really hate competition, okay? I really do, because I don't wanna compete for someone's attention. If I have to compete for someone's attention, I lose interest rather quickly, okay? I'm just telling you how I feel as a man. If I, I, I think a woman is talking to multiple people, I oftentimes, especially if there's interest between the two of us, and I, I know that, I, by the way, a lot of men love competition. They love it. You've heard the phrase, men love the hunt, men love the chase. But the minute they get the conquest, they're done because it was only the hunt, the chase, the competition. But there so wasn't just, any fact to suggest that I was even talking, let alone going out with multiple people. I was just going well, out beings, and doing my own shit. Know, but, <laughs> but just recognize, Human beings make up stories in their head all the time. I, I recognize that. I'm just trying to address what could have been going on inside of him, just, just to recognize that. Mm -hmm. So coming back to your original question, how to navigate a speed dating event. You know, for the most part, it's very rare two people connect at a speed dating event and go, oh my gosh, there's even a tiny bit of wow, okay? And by the way, if two people are experiencing a tiny bit of wow, they usually have a they those those two people connect and usually take off, okay? Because they're feeling a wow. A no, bit of wow. There was quite a bit of wow with the last one. <laughs> oh, just from it. your perspective. From yours well, or his? Well, I thought there was a mutual connection and he said we should talk more. And okay. well, he said that before we exchanged numbers at the end of the event through the process. Well, yeah. now, uh, okay, so let me be clear. You you felt a wow with this person? A little bit of wow, <laughs> not a okay, huge okay, wow. A little bit is, is fine. <laughs> and you believe he felt a little bit of wow? It came across that way. Okay. 
And then what happened with that guy? That was the guy who um, who didn't call back. I mean, who didn't call because I said, I'm not home at 630. Okay. Um, well, a couple things, other, a couple other things could have been going on. He could have felt, he could have connected three with three women at the speed dating event. So it could have been that someone else had a, you know, was up on the roster ahead of you. That's certainly, that's something that can happen. This is relatively, unlike 50 plus years ago, most people dated one person at a time, 50, 60 mm -hmm. 70 years ago, people used to, now we date, we have multiple people in our vortex. There's all, there's actually this thing known as paradox of choice. Can someone write that in the chat box? Paradox of choice. There's a TED talk that talks about this phenomenon that we've ex been experiencing in society over the last few, 50 years is paradox of choice. And that's certainly become prevalent ever since online dating began to take hold. We, we are over inundated with multiple options and oftentimes we get stifled because we can't make a choice when we have these so many options. So that could have been another thing that was happening in that moment. He could have got offended you weren't available. That's certainly, but then you dodged a bullet. If he got offended that you weren't available, you dodged a bullet, okay? So that's certainly yeah, oh, I someone guess. just posted this I guess. paradox. Because there's approach. no reason to get offended. I didn't say anything I, offensive. I, <laughs> I, I I get that, but I just recognize that human beings are very complex emotional beings. Okay. They're act it's very rare that two people come together so perfectly aligned in their ideologies, their emotional maturity, their intelligence, their lifestyle compatibility, their values. So you're gonna have differences, okay? And how he reacted to this might be different than five other men react, okay? It's just an awareness that this can happen. So yeah, well, in my, in my mind, the, the person would say, okay, well, how about tomorrow? Or what time is good for you? He didn't ask me what time was good for me or if 6.30 was good for me. He would just say, he just said, I'll call you at 6.30. And okay. So, Elena, <laughs> yeah. how did you feel about that? How did you feel about him? Frustrated, not... annoyed, hurt. I take this shit personally. Like, I know maybe, oh, I shouldn't, well, maybe I shouldn't date because this hits me so personally. And I'm like, yeah. So you just said something so frustrated, disappointed, hurt, personally rejected. You didn't use that word, but I'm going to throw that one in there. So, yeah, that can feel rather really, I mean, that can hurt. And so I think it's important to honor the hurt you felt. Okay, let's honor the hurt that you felt in that moment. So, you know, one thing to do is just yell and scream, let it out of your body. Okay. Because, and by the way, if we take it personally, then then we're not loving on ourselves in that moment. We're actually beating up on the little kid inside of us. So first off, I want to give you a big, gigantic Jonathan bear hug for feeling that pain in that moment. Okay. <laughs> Thank and you. I recognize that. Now I want to caution you to judge him because all that does is amplify the pain. Rather than judge him, I would just simply go, thank you, universe, for not allowing, you know, you can thank the universe for not allowing you to spend more time with the wrong person, okay? And also, and by the way, I will say that this, Elena, dating today is not for the faint of heart. Relationships are not for the faint of heart. This requires deep personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, deep emotional IQ, deep self-love to navigate these experiences because we're meeting total strangers. We have no familiarity with one another, and it doesn't feel safe for him, and it doesn't feel safe for you. This is the challenge because unlike 100 years ago, most everybody who mated with one another knew each other. They grew up in the same town, the same village, the same tribe. Most everybody knew each other. They had family and friends that were connected with one another. We don't experience that anymore. So it's natural to feel the way you did because a stranger dismissed you. And so I invite you to certainly process that feeling and go, okay, how can I approach this process differently? 
How can I approach this process differently? Maybe I believe asking those direct questions that you talked about earlier on has the propensity to build intimacy. It has a propensity to build a deeper connection with someone. And I recognize the city you live in might seem rather benign as a question that a man might ask. You know, by the way, when you were sharing that, Elena, quickly, I want to share a quick story. It reminds me of going to a high school reunion. It's always the same thing. You know, how many kids do you have? What do you do for a living? Where do you live? How many kids do you have? What do you do for a living? Where do you live? How many kids do you have? Where do you, you know, like that's the question you do from person to person, to person, to person, to person, to person, and then you've just filled your <laughs> night. Okay. See, most humans don't know how to go deeper. It's interesting. I had dinner with a, a female friend the other night. And she, she asked me an interesting question. She said, she said, tell me something I don't know about you. Now, she didn't know a lot about me. But in that question, I, I actually paused for a moment. Tell me something I don't know about you. It's an interesting question to pose on a person. And we both shared each other. Actually, we both shared an insecurity about you know, what, how we feel about the dating process. We both shared a personal, now mind you, she was a friend, so that felt a little safer. And when I say friend, we've only interacted a few times, so I should really say more like a social media acquaintance. But tell me something I don't know about you. That's an interesting open-ended question, and it reveals a lot based on how that person answers. Now, I know you don't have that much time in a five-minute speed dating, so I think it's important no, to at that point. Well, I think it's important to one of the things I do in my private coaching is help a woman what I do called know thyself, know who's compatible with them. So for example, if you are like I shared earlier in the broadcast, I'm an empty nester and I seek someone who's also an empty nester. So to me, that's one of an important question to ask. Let me give you an example of this. Some years ago, this was back right after my divorce. I was 45 years old. And I'm at a bar and I see a woman looking at me and I'm looking at her and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her. And she's looking at me. This goes on for like an hour before I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And, and I know nothing about her. She's a total stranger. And as we got to talking, I said, how old are you? And she said, 27. Now, I'll be candid with you. I didn't know if she was a 40 year old woman that just looked good for her age. I just, there was just this eye contact going on. And I said to her, I go, I, do you have any children? She says, no. I go, do you want children? Yes. I don't want children anymore. So there was no need to continue on the conversation. You know, there's, I'm not, I don't need to spend an hour conversing. Now, some of you might say, well, Jonathan, you could make a new friend. I don't need new friends in my life. I mean, I don't spend enough time with the friends I have, but do you see my point? Asking those poignant questions to determine some level of compatibility is radically important. So don't discount some of those practical questions, but you can certainly go through and ask the question of, tell me something I don't know about you. That might, I'm just interesting if it would, you know, create more of an emotional connection with another person. So when are you doing your next uh, speed dating event? Tonight. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, let's give you, everybody who's following this, this conversation, let's give Elena some props. You're going out there. You're making effort. Um, is there any theme to this speed dating event? No, it's just a bar. And just a bar. Do you know how many people are going? Probably uh, around 10 of each. Okay. Hey, you know what? A broken clock is right twice a day. In other words, I will <laughs> say this once there, you know, probably not out of a group of 10 people, the probability isn't that there's going to be a love connection, but I bet anything two people will connect and at least have a date afterwards. I think that's a possibility. Um, because the reality is you, most of the time you're only attracted to about 10% of the population at best. Okay. And only 10% of the pop, you know, in other words, it's like, you might be attracted to a guy, but he's not attracted to you or vice versa. He's attracted to you and you're not attracted to him. Right. Um, I'm sure you get lots of men who are attracted to you. So they demonstrate interest, but you're not attracted to them. Right. I'm sure that happens a lot. Right. That happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to wish you much success tonight. Thank you. 
Yeah. Is there any other question before we wrap up? No, that's good for now. Just wanted to get it out there. <laughs> get out my I frustration. It. <laughs> yeah. It well, just remember. So, I, I ask myself every time, do I really need to do that? Do I want to go through this again and come home and be frustrated? And then for I'm some reason, I want to try again. <laughs> here's, my, here's my last bit of advice and then we'll wrap up. Before you walk into the event, I want you to sit in your car and put your hand on your heart and close your eyes and take three deep breaths ah, and just let it out. And I'll just expel like this. And I just want you to just invite spirit into your heart and say, I'm open and receptive to all possibilities tonight. I'm open and receptive to all possibilities tonight. Do me a favor, put your hand over your heart right now do that and say, I'm open and receptive to all possibilities that happen tonight. I'm open and receptive to all possibilities tonight. Yeah. Do that several times before you walk in. And hopefully that changes your energy state. And then right before you walk in, I want you to jump up and down 10 times. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that might look that a energy. funny huh? <laughs> outside the bar. But you know what? Actually, that just changed your energy. You're happy right now. You've just actually changed your state of energy. Before I shoot every video, I always do that. Right before I go online, I go, yes, 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 yes. Okay. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'm just, you know what? I'm just, you know, you can take, that's why if advice, if it you ask for advice, it either resonates with you or not. And I want to remind you what that girl just told everyone. It's raining great men. It's raining great women. It's raining great men. Just hold that vision. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Good luck, Elena. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye now. Oh, I'm so glad she jumped on. This was a great conversation to talk about um, with respect to connecting with another human being. We can oftentimes make up stories about what's going on, but rarely do two people meet in this environment and they feel a wow. They might feel a little wow, like she said, but even when someone's feeling a little wow, they also have their fears, their anxieties, their pains, past hurts that cause them to be blocked to love. That's just a sad reality of what we're faced with today. So the advice I gave her going forward is simply be open and receptive to love and then change your energy state. Don't go in as a pessimist. Go in with beginner's mind because she even said, I'm really reluctant to do this. But if you go in with that pessimism, then you're going to attract that. Go in with beginner's mind, be open and receptive to love. And maybe, maybe she'll come back next time and tell us she met a great guy because it's raining great men, it's raining great women, it's raining great men. Is this resonating with you? If this conversation is resonating with you, please let me know. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a group, there's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's uh, links to get the books I recommend. You can follow me on Instagram, all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives.